welcome to Crafting Kitty. My name is Erin. It is Saturday. So it's time for my weekly roundup. Yeah! So what is a weekly roundup? It's basically where we go through my week in crafting. We also go through what I'm reading, but I'm now realizing I forgot my book in the other room and I'm frankly not inclined to go get it. <laughs> oh well. Um, so today we're going to talk about my projects, any whips I have. Of course, I've got whips, works in progress. FO's finished objects. We're also going to look at my stitch marker of the day from Ellie Leva at Ellie Leva's Crafts and More. So let's start with this one. So we're on the 11th stitch marker. Look at that. I'm excited. These are nice. I very much enjoy these packs. Highly recommend them. Can't say enough good things about her stitch marker sets. <gasps> this is adorable! Oh, this is cute! It's an ice cream cone! It's got um, pink ice cream and then some little sprinkles. Oops, it's flipping the wrong way. And some sprinkles. Are you going to focus? There you go. That's so cute! That is adorable. Okay, I'm going to go put it on my foodstuffs one. Here we go. Very nice, very nice. We have four more stitch markers to open. Um, just a note, I am pre-filming a lot since I'm using this camera. My, uh, my recording schedule has changed. So I don't have as many finished objects as I might have because, spoiler alert, it's really not Saturday for me. It's Saturday for you, but not for me. <laughs> um, usually I do, before I switch to the camera, I would film Saturday morning and then upload. Um, it takes more to process and I haven't really refined my workflow yet. So things will get quicker as I get more used to the programs and things, but it's a learning curve. Um, I've lost where I was going. Let's talk about finished objects. I have two to share this week. And that's exciting for me. Um, I guess, spoiler alert, I am filming this on Thursday morning. So I did make a washcloth, a Tunisian crochet washcloth. <laughs> it's supposed to go like this. Um, this is still using the Americana. It's actually called American Multi or Multi-American. One of the two. Big Twist Joanne's Cotton Yarn. Um, I can get two of these Tunisian washcloths from one of the small balls. So it's, it's pretty nice. Um, this is a pattern from Mikey at the Crochet Crowd. It's called the Bubble Up Washcloth. It will be linked down below. This was a fun one. It's similar to maybe the very first one I tried with that had like a crossover stitch. But this one had like a crossover stitch and then an extended single Tunisian stitch. Um, or maybe it's an extended simple. I don't know. I'm still trying to learn the lingo of this. But it was a different stitch combination. So it was very fun to learn a new stitch. This has a great texture. I like this. I like this one a lot. Um, I did find that my stitches were a little loose. I think I could stand to practice this one maybe one or two more times. And I think I, I probably will. But yeah, this was a fun one. It's a new one. It's a nice one. And then I continued my adventures in hat making for my um, LYS hat challenge, a local yarn shop near me, uh, Yarn Junction LLC, if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, um, is doing a challenge where if you make 23 hats in the year 2023 using yarn you got from their store, so you can't just buy something from Walmart and then bring it to them. Um, they will give you a skein of Madeline Tosh yarn, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So I decided to accept the challenge. This month, or this month, this week, I used Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash. Here you go. This colorway is 314 and it's 100% Superwash wool. It is a three weight. It's a DK. Um, 100 grams, 220 yards in this thing. Um, 
yeah, so this is a hat of my own design. I'm actually quite proud of this one. I mean, I actually named this one. Normally, I just call it Freehand Hat. This one I named Down the Pebbled Path. <laughs> Look at that! I mean, I'm sure I am not the first one ever to think of this design, but I'm pretty proud of this one. I actually tried to do some designing. I've got a half double crochet crown. I've got a rib there. I got some double crochets. I've got the pebble stitch section, thus the pebbled path. And then I did um, some post stitches for the brim. I had intended to do another section of double crochets here to kind of bracket it, but <laughs> I realized it was getting quite long. So I did a couple of rows of double crochet rib stitch and then just finished it off with a single round of single crochet. And here's what it is. It, I like it. I think this is a good one. I'm proud of it. Boom. I don't know if I'll do the tutorial on it. I'm not sure. I'm sure bod in her millions of hats has something very similar but like i said i was just messing around and actually tried to consciously design something other than just straight half doubles or doubles or anything like that so this is what i came up with exciting oh washcloths these are all i'm doing for donation and this is for the starfish association um it is a group that is collecting washcloths for veterans. They are collecting them through uh, November 11th, so Veterans Day, and they're, I'm assuming, making some sort of care package for specifically homeless vets and perhaps other vets who may be in need. Um, Heather from Strings and Threads was reached out by the association, and she's kind of been the point person, so if you want more information, please go check out Heather's channel. She's got a number of videos talking about it, and yeah, excitement <laughs> it's always fun to me i had actually started trying to do washcloths to practice my tunisian stitch but it's nice to have a set destination not well i'm practicing guess this gets thrown into the cabinet you know so these they have a purpose they're going to have a home once i finish all the americana yarn i should have six i have i'm on my last skein now um, I'm going to send that off. So next week you'll probably see my last one. And then I'll send the the package on with those six. I do plan to continue making more washcloths, but I figure send them out in, you know, little packs. And then yeah, if they do get overrun and say, Heather, put the brakes on, <laughs> then we'll know, you know? <laughs> so those are my two finished objects. Yay! Um, for things I'm working on, uh, I don't even know if one, two, three, four, five, I've got six whips to share today. A little heavy on the whip department. That's okay. So first I started kind of a project while I'm in here editing and processing. I've got my, the blanket that Chomps wanted for his stuffies. So he picked out this yarn. It's Karen Simply Soft in green and purple. The balls are way over there. Um, so I don't know if it's actually just green and purple, but it's pretty. Um, I asked him if he wanted multiple small blankets or one larger blanket for all of his stuffies to share, and he requested one larger blanket. Am I showing you the wrong side? Indeed I am. Okay, now I'm showing you the correct side. Okay. So this is just me freehanding and experimenting. You can see I must have added some too many extra stitches somewhere because I'm getting a bit of a ruffling effect going on, but it's just for something around the house. I'm not going to do a tutorial for this. He just wants something for his stuffies. So he doesn't mind. It's just I'm doing a granny stitch. And then here I did a couple rows of single crochet, granny switch, half doubles, granny switch, and then I'm going to do doubles and then granny switch. And um, I actually think that might be the end and then maybe I put a border on it and we see. 
I don't know. But I think it's nice. It's very soft. It's fun. He's loving it. And that's all that matters. There you go. Oh, the stitch marker I'm using here is one of the 4th of July set from Ellie Leva. There you go. And like I said, the yarn is Caron Simply Soft. The hook I'm using is a hook I got from a pack on Amazon. It, um, I don't remember the name of the pack, but I do plan on doing a review of them. I quite like it. It's very comfortable in my hand. I, I like these. I think it's a good one. Um, so that's that one. Don't have a name for that blanket. I don't know, just kind of messing around. <laughs> um, the next thing I'm doing is my knit hat. This is another hat for the LOIS challenge, but it's taking me a lot longer because it's knit. And I wanted to do this one because it has a technique that I haven't done before that I frankly put off doing. And <laughs> it turned out to be only painful because of its number of rows of one by one um, ribbing. So this is the um, bristle cone hat. It's a free pattern from Fancy Tiger Crafts. Um, I believe her name is Amber Corcoran. There it is. There's their name. There's the hats. There's her name. Um, this pattern comes infant all the way to large adult. So there's like six sizes of hats in here. It's a DK, made for DK yarn. It's very enjoyable. I'm having fun with this one. I am using Wonderland Yarns Silk Twist in the colorway Glow Worm. There's the tag. Here's the yarn, which is beautiful. Um, I've made some progress. It wants to roll in on itself, but that will of course be taken care of once the entire hat is done. Look at that fun pattern. It's kind of a bit of a faux cabling going on. And the technique I had been avoiding is you make a bunch of one by one ribs, you fold it together, you do it on a provisional cast on, fold it over, rip out the provisional cast on, knit the two layers together so you create a double layer brim, and then you just continue knitting on and make the, the body of the hat. So right now I'm on the body of the hat. I am using my Chowgu interchangeable needle set that I got from Brian, the steel one, five and a half inch tips, and that's about it. Oh, my stitch marker is just the Chowgu stitch marker that came with the interchangeable needles. And yeah, we're trucking along. You're supposed to do five repeats of the, the, um, the pattern for the, the body of the hat. I have finished my second pattern repeat. So three more pattern repeats and then you just do an 11 row crown and you're done. So that's exciting. I think this one will have a pom-pom at the end. I don't know what color the pom-pom will be. The next one I have is, let's do this one. The blanket, not the blanket, the bag I am making for one of the prizes uh, for the Crafting Kitty Creator Spotlight. That is Siren's Crochet. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I've got a couple of videos talking about that. Basically each month we pick a creator and we share items we have already created or are creating this month. And there's prizes based on the number of entrants. One of the prizes is usually something I create from that creator. And this month I am making her diamond tote bag. So here it is. I've had to do some color blocking because I didn't have quite enough yarn. Um, so I did the kind of multi on the bottom. I've used all of my green to make the body of the bag. Just had one last row that I didn't have enough to do. And then the handles are next. So I'm right at the stopping point for the handles. This is fun. I don't do a lot of fillet crochet and I'm enjoying this. I don't intend on lining this one. Um, I am using uh, Loops and Threads Eco Cotton Capri. Capri Eco Cotton. This, I will say I went to Joann's to look for more of the green. 
the new green they have on the shelves is vastly different than this. It says it's the same color. It is not. This is more of like an evergreen green. And the one they have now is more of a grass green. They do not match at all. So I will have to, I did have to go back to the speckled. Um, this colorway is green speckle. I think it's cute. I'm not too upset, but I think it, it kind of gives us a nice design element. I hope the winner agrees. <laughs> I do have a little hesitation with the uh, lighter color being on the bottom, if that's going to get dirty or something. And of course the handles being a lighter color, they might pick up a bit more dirt. You know, if you're at the farmer's market or whatever, how you're using it, but it's cotton. It should be pretty easy to wash and I'm hoping you can just shake it off. <laughs> so there, that's the yarn I'm using. My, cro my uh, stitch marker is a heart I got from Angela at my precious, precious yarnery a while ago. Uh, there we go. There you go. It's a very cute. She makes wonderful stitch markers. Um, and my needle is just the um, Susan Bates G four millimeter, just the standard Susan Bates. And next. I have my sock. Well, it's for Chomps. He wanted strawberry socks. Bag I'm using is from Queen Crafts by Bridget. Very cool. I love this bag, Bridget. I love it to pieces. Um, I finished... Oh, come on out here. No, that's not the one I'm working on. That's the one I already finished. Here we go. So, I finished the heel flap turn. I've picked up all the stitches for the gusset, but I'm just now on the first row of kind of the decreases to close the gusset and then start the foot of the sock. So here you go. Kind of looks like a fish to me. <laughs> so there it is. Very cute. Very cool. I am using the Premier Yarn Fruits sock yarn for this one in the color strawberry and the pattern I am using is the um, kids knit socks pattern from premier.com it comes up two patterns come up when you look at these um, this yarn on premier.com it's an adult version and a kids version it is basically the crazy sock ladies vanilla um, they do have a different toe decrease I thought it was coming out too pointy, so I went back and I used the Crazy Sock Ladies toe decrease. I just thought it would work better for his little foot. Um, and yeah, there we go. It's fun. It's the slip stitch heel flap and then all that. Um, they also do a two by two rib, but if you watch the tutorial, she uses a one by one rib for her cuffs. If you watch her like vloggy video, she often does a two by two. So that one is pretty much interchangeable, whatever you want to do there. Um, I am using my US2 uh, Clover Takumi Bamboo needles and I'm just using some, you know, light bulb style stitch markers I got in a giant pack from the Zahn. Uh, I think that's all. About this one. I'm really trying to work on making sure I give props to everybody when I'm using their projects or products. So there we go. And then I have my blanket. So I've said I want to try to always have a BOD project on the go. This time my broad BOD project is a baby blanket. This baby blanket is using some Turkish direct yarn from Hirschner's in like a minty color. It is, I don't even know, <laughs> it's all in Turkish. I'll show you the label. They probably sell it under a house brand. I would look for Minak or Baby, like Soho Baby or, you know, something like that. Uh, this is how much I have left of my second skein of the yarn. And this is where I am at. I have not done a ton of work on this one and I'll show you why in a moment. But progress was made. 
And there you go. It's lovely. I like how squishy it is. This is going to be a present for one of Brian's new hires whose wife is expecting. And, oh, it is a baby girl. I have confirmed that. So I think mint green is perfect. I'm using one of Ellie Leva's stitch markers from her 4th of July set. There we go. The hook I'm using is my, you know, uh, Handy Susan Bates J10 six millimeter hook. And there we go. So not much to say here other than we're plucking along. And uh, I didn't do a super good job hiding that tail. You know, you crochet over the tail and sometimes it just doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't look right. I'll fix it. <laughs> That's the nice thing. You can just go in and fix it. Um, I haven't decided if I want to trim it in the mint or a gray or a white. Knowing that it's a girl, I don't think it really changes my options. Um, we'll see. We'll see when I get to the, the point of trimming it. The final project I have to share with you is, I'm going to put the hat back here, is... A while ago, and this has been a forgotten one that I was like, whoa, I forgot about you. I need to work on you. <laughs> a while ago, Bingo picked out a yarn and wanted me to make a blanket in the shape of a heart for it. Um, <laughs> it is... Oh, I've been collecting... <laughs> you know when people put their videos out and say, oh, I'm doing this pattern. Oh, that's when that was sent to me by Sherry. Um, anyway, I print them, throw them, leave, just leave them on the printer, and then occasionally throw them in a bag to carry up to the craft room. So, a pile of patterns. I may or may not ever get to them. <laughs> um, okay, so the colorway she picked out is Super Saver in... Sutherland stripe. You, it's hard to see because the ball is so floppy. I have had to restart this project. This is the sixth iteration of it. It is by far the most successful and I believe I'm going to finish it this time. But <laughs> here we go. It's a heart. And I, I know some people have some patterns and tutorials for heart shaped blankets. I wanted to see if I could do it myself, and it <laughs> it's a heart. <laughs> um, I am writing down what I'm doing. I'll see how it turns out at the end, if it's going to be something worth doing a tutorial on. I don't know. I started with a granny square, and then I started, like, blooping out. On a couple of them, I had tried to start with a circle and then expand it. And I was just having such a hard time converting this, the circle to get the points and then to get the bloopers for the hearts up here. So I think once I realized I could switch to a square to start and then kind of just make it a diamond and use the point as the bottom and then build out here for the little lobes of the heart. I don't know. <laughs> then I started having more success. And then it was just when the low when when the shaping wasn't turning out right i could just tear it back down to the basic granny square and start back up but i have a gigantic tangle of this yarn in a project bag the stitch markers all around are a jumble um this one is from ellie leva i think most of these are from angela at my precious yarnery i think a few like the paw prints are from uh, Daniel at Pawpie. And yeah, so there we go. It's coming along. I think I think I might have made the, the lobes a little too big. And that's what's throwing it off. But I'm going to try to to pull it back in. To rein it in on the next couple rounds. And hopefully this is the final go. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But that is the final whip for today. I'm excited. Um, in the books I'm reading, I'm still reading the Burnham Wood book. It is interesting. Um, I can't say the characters are very likable to me, <laughs> so I don't know. It's heavily, heavily kind of referencing 
like Shakespearean tragedies. I mean, Burnham Wood, Macbeth, you get the connection. Um, I finished the first part. I think I'm going to push through because I'm like 120 some pages in now, but it's not quite as amusing as I had hoped it would be. There are some pretty heavy ethical debates in there that are kind of handled, I, I think, a little heavy handedly. Um, but yeah, the, I read on the flap, a, a couple of the reviews were, um, comparing her writing and the, the humor in it to like Jane Austen style. I'm not seeing that. I'm not feeling that right now. I love Jane Austen. So that's another reason why I was attracted to this book. Um, but yeah, it's Burnham Wood. I've forgotten her first name. Her last name is Catan. C-A-T-T-O-N. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. Elizabeth, maybe? I feel like that's right. Um, she also wrote a book called The Luminaries, for which she won the Booker Prize, which is, you know, a pretty good indicator that she's a quality writer. So that's another reason why I wanted to give the book a shot. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll have it finished for next week. It's in three parts, kind of like a play. So I finished part one. I've begun part two and we'll see how it goes. I am going to see you later and let you go. Okay. Bye-bye.